this week on the show, we have celebrity decluttering expert, Tracy McCubin. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about how when you understand that the universe has unlimited resources, we'll never be envious of someone else's success. The reality is many people don't cheer for other people because on a subconscious level, they feel that someone else's success will take away from their own success and capabilities. But when you realize that the universe has unlimited resources and that success is yours for the taking if you choose to have it, you develop an abundance mindset, never having to worry if there are enough resources for us all to succeed and shine bright. The reality is success is not just for a chosen few. It's available to anyone that is willing to take risks, work hard, and dare to dream. Make it your mission today to change your perspective from one free of lack to an abundance mindset and watch how success and luck begin to shift in your favor. As Alan Cohen so eloquently quotes, abundance is not a number or acquisition. It is the simple recognition of enoughness. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break. You know, of course, spring just launched and you know, everybody wants to do some spring cleaning. I feel that, you know, it's time to, you know, get the old out and in with the, the new. So let's talk about, you know, for people that are really overwhelmed, they don't know where to start. What are some tips you can give them on decluttering their space? Oh, this is so fantastic. So the first thing that I tell people, and I like to joke that this is the woo woo step, like, but I want people to take a minute and figure out why do you want to get organized? Like, what are you trying to accomplish? Do you want to clean out your garage so you can park your car in it? Do you not want to be stressed in the morning when you're getting dressed? Do you want to empty a guest room that's been used as storage so you can have friends come visit? When you get clear about why, then that motivates you. So that's your first step is to get you know get clear about your why and then also to start small and one of the things I did I created these five minute decluttering challenges and they're up on my social media on Instagram and TikTok and they are amazing Dariel it's like you just take one category coffee mugs pens socks and five minutes, five to 10 minutes, you just declutter this one little category. And the next thing you knew, if you follow them, you will have decluttered your whole house. Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next up on the show, we have celebrity decluttering expert, Tracy McCubin. Hi, Tracy, how are you today? Thank you for being on the show. I'm great, Daryl. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. I'm excited to talk to you because I feel that your services are so needed right now, especially with spring um, just launching. I think it's uh, gonna be a very exciting conversation. So let's get into it. Let's talk about your company, uh, Declutterfly. Um, tell us about your journey starting it and how clutter affects your mood. So I, um, I'm one of those people that I joke, I spent a lot of time doing jobs I didn't want to do. I was like, oh, I was an assistant and I was a secretary and I was a word processor and I did bookkeeping and it never clicked for me. And then one time when I was working as a personal assistant, I started to get a lot of calls for people needing help. And they weren't really sure what they needed, but it was like, oh, my garage is so full and I don't know what to do with all this stuff. Or my grandmother passed away and I need to empty her house and I don't know what to do. And I would dive right in and I loved it. It just lit me up and I was wow. so excited. And then all of a sudden a friend of mine was like, I think you have a company. And I was like, what? No, I'm just <laughs> helping people. And he's like, that can be your job. So I launched 17 years ago and we are, well, I have 10 people working for me now and we are so busy and we love what we do. We love it. Very nice. And how do you feel that clutter and being um, organized, being organized, how does it help you live a more productive and happier life and decluttering all of that junk in the house? <laughs> exactly. So the way that I describe clutter is that when you have a cluttered house, you have a constant to-do list, right? You walk into your house and all you see is the clutter and you're like, I need to find a home for that or I need to get rid of that or I regret buying that, that it just bombards you. 
And what we don't realize is that that kind of bombardment and dealing with that clutter all the time increases our stress levels, right? We can only manage so much during the day. And if you're dealing, like if you have to come home and every night clear off the dining room table with bags and backpacks and sweaters to be able to sit down and eat a healthy meal, you're probably going to go through drive through right? Or you're yeah. probably going to take out. So when you look at how much time you're spending managing your clutter, all of a sudden you're like, oh, that's where a bunch of my stress is coming from. Mm -hmm. That is so true. When you're organized, I feel that, you know, you spend less money. I mean, even for clothes, for example, you might have that item in your closet, but if you can't find it, <laughs> you might go out and buy another one, right? It's, it's just as simple as that. Absolutely. Absolutely. The other thing about an organized closet, and this is really important for people to know, Dariel, I'm not saying be organized to be right, like to have it look good for Pinterest or Instagram. I'm saying be, be organized because it makes your life easier. So the example you gave of clothes is great. Look, if you go in your closet and it's just a complete disaster and you don't know where anything is, and then you finally get it organized, what happens with my clients is they're like, I have 15 pairs of black pants <laughs> and they're all the same. Yeah. What am I, what did I spend money on? I only like these three. I have these other 12 that I never wear. Like, yeah. oh my goodness. And so when you're organized, you see how much of things you actually have. It's very true. Tracy, I need your help decluttering my closet. I have <laughs> way too many clothes <laughs> and I don't even know what I have. So I am definitely guilty of that. And I definitely need some help in decluttering my space. And, and the interesting thing is we only wear 20% of our clothes 80% of the time. Yeah. So we wear so little of our closet. Well, I'm happy. I will come over anytime. We'll roll up our sleeves and get in there. I'm going to take you up on that. And also, you know, of course, spring um, just launched and, you know, everybody wants to do some spring cleaning. I feel that, um, you know, it's time to, you know, get the old out and in with the, the new. So let's talk about, um, you know, for people that are really overwhelmed, they don't know where to start. What are some tips you can give them on decluttering their space? Oh, this is so fantastic. So the first thing that I tell people, and I like to joke that this is the woo woo step, like, but I want people to take a minute and figure out why do you want to get organized? Like, what are you trying to accomplish? Do you want to clean out your garage so you can park your car in it? Do you not want to be stressed in the morning when you're getting dressed? Do you want to empty a guest room that's been used as storage so you can have friends come visit? When you get clear about why, then that motivates you. So that's your first step is to get, you know, get clear about your why and then also to start small. And one of the things I did, I created these five minute decluttering challenges and they're up on my social media on Instagram and TikTok. And they are amazing, Dariel. It's like you just take one category, coffee mugs, pens, socks, and five minutes, five to 10 minutes, you just declutter this one little category. And the next thing you knew, if you follow them, you will have decluttered your whole house. So it is a great way for people who are overwhelmed to get started. Mm -hmm. I think that's great advice, starting small. I think that, you know, oftentimes you want to start big and then we get overwhelmed, but it's just little things, right? Maybe just organizing a little bit at a time that really helps, right, over time. Absolutely, and I think sometimes people, you know, we're all, guilty of wishful thinking. We all think we have more time than we actually do. And we're like, I'm gonna spend this whole weekend or my whole vacation. Yes. It's like, no, you're not. And that's okay. So starting small is really the key to success. Mm -hmm. And I know that we touched base on this already, but you know, the whole theory, a cluttered space equals a cluttered mind. Let's talk about that theory a little bit more. So this is great. And I don't know if you've ever thought about this, but there's something that exists called decision fatigue. So basically the simplest de definition is when you have to make a lot of decisions, your brain gets tired and it defaults to making bad decisions. So it's the reason that when you wake up in the morning rested, you're like, I'm only going to have steamed broccoli and chicken today. <laughs> and then, you know, eight o'clock at night when you're exhausted, you eat a whole pepperoni <laughs> pizza. You're like, how did that happen? <laughs> it's the same thing with clutter. Every piece of clutter in your house is a decision you have to make. So if you're living in a cluttered house, you are constantly 
putting yourself in decision fatigue. So my goal with everybody is to get them to create a home that works for them, that simplifies their life and supports what they want to do. And I don't want all your time spent decluttering and organizing and cleaning. I want you to enjoy your life. So when you are organized, when you are decluttered, you are able to do so much more. Mm -hmm. And speaking about that, let's talk about your book, Make Space for Happiness. I know it's a number one best-selling book on Amazon. So let's talk a little bit about the book. Absolutely. So the book came out um, a couple months ago and it was really born out of what I was seeing people go through in the pandemic. Basically, I was driving around Los Angeles and I saw all those Amazon packages like stacked <laughs> on people's doorsteps, like yeah. just like amazing. And I thought, you know, we can't talk about decluttering if we don't talk about what we're bringing into our house. Because every clients always say to me like, I don't know how everything got in here. And I'm like, you brought it in. You literally bought it and brought it in. <laughs> So in the book, I do a deep dive about why we shop and what we're trying to fix by shopping. You know, are we trying to get self-confidence by lots of lotions and potions? And, you know, are we trying to, you know, get connection with people by shopping? Or are we trying to, you know, show our grandkids that we love them by overbuying for them? And it's just been so well received and it's really another piece in the part of the journey of like, I want to have a mindful, accountable life and I need to look at all aspects of it. So we can't talk about decluttering if we're not talking about what we're buying. Yeah, and how, how do we become more mindful in our shopping? Because as you said, you know, with Amazon and online shopping, it's so easy to click that button and just buy things. So how do we become more mindful and kind of, you know, look at what we already have? <laughs> so a couple great things, and this one's really tough, but you can run a spending report on Amazon. It has a feature where you can go back three months and do a report of everything you've spent. So I suggest doing that for people and then going through and marking, did I really need that? Did I really want that? Was that worth the money? And like doing a deep dive on what you've spent. And also, Daryl, this is a great thing for people to do and they can start today. Stop saying I need. Stop saying, I need a new pair of jeans or I need a new pair of high heels because chances are you don't need them. You just want them, which is okay, but you got to get honest with yourself. And once you start saying, oh, I want a new pair of jeans, what happens is after a day or two, you're like, no, I don't really want them. I was just having a bad day at work. So it's about identifying what you're feeling in the moment when you start hitting that it, add to cart, add to cart, add to cart button. Yeah, I like that. I, I do not want to see how much I spent on Amazon. I'm afraid to check that <laughs> report. I think I might pass on that. But I think that's a great idea is just to so you know what you're actually spending. I think most people don't even know what they're buying, what they're spending. They only see the clutter at the end and they think, well, how did this happen? <laughs> right? All you have to do is go look at the recycle bins and all of those cardboard boxes. Like people yeah. are just, you know, it's, and you know, now that online shopping is so much easier. I mean, you know, we joke, you don't even have to put pants on to go shopping anymore, that we have to really be mindful and look at our behavior and doing an accounting of what you're spending is a great way to start. It's not fun. I'm going to tell you, I'm with you. It is not fun, but you're like, okay, I got honest. I got real with myself. Yeah. And in your book, it makes space for happiness. I know you talk about, you know, as you were talking about earlier, buying too much stuff makes you feel empty. So let's talk more about that. Absolutely. So the way that I look at it, I feel like we all think we have something missing, right? We're like, we don't have enough self-confidence or I don't have enough love in my life or I'm feeling lonely. And so we've gotten to this idea that we can fill that stuff by shopping and buying. But what happens is it doesn't work. It doesn't make you feel better. And so it makes you feel better for like a second because you get a little hit of dopamine when you shop. And then you're like, oh, well, that, that went away. So I've got to shop some more. I've got to shop some more. But that shopping is not going to fill what you're looking for. So what I talk about in the book is how to identify what's going on why you're over shopping and other ways that you can get that fulfillment that's not shopping. This is really interesting, Daryl. Did you know that if you write a handwritten thank you note to someone, you increase your dopamine, so you increase your happiness for 30 days? Wow. Okay, 
nice. Just Isn't a hand, a little handwritten letter. Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh. Being in the in the practice of gratitude and writing it out by hand increases your oh. dopamine for 30 days. Isn't that amazing? I totally believe that because I'm definitely one for affirmations, um, gratitude. These are things I practice daily, and I find that it boosts my happiness so much. So I can. I'm sure that is 100% true. And it's, it's nice, right? To write a little note to someone saying thank you. <laughs> it's so sweet. But, and that's such a, you brought up such a great thing about a gratitude practice too, because I, this is what I tell clients all the time. If you're grateful for what you have, and if you, like I, t I start the day every morning, I write five things I'm grateful for when I open my eyes. Mm -hmm. First thing I do, you know, just, and simple, like clean sheets or sun is out or, you know, just very simple, simple things. And when you're in a practice of gratitude or count your blessings, however you want to phrase it, you don't consume as much because you're really focused on what you already have instead of where you think your life is lacking. So that's a great way to get on top of your spending, be in gratitude. Like we have yeah. so much when you look around and it's such a lovely practice like for yourself. And, and then you start the day off feeling full and not empty. Absolutely. I mean, what's better than clean sheets, right? <laughs> you sleep like a baby. <laughs> Who doesn't love the clean sheets? And, and, oh my God, laundry day with yes. those crisp white sheets. It's just my absolute favorite. I'm with you, <laughs> with you. Absolutely. And speaking about happiness, I know that decluttering leads to happiness in these areas. Uh, you talk about true connection, self-confidence, free time, big love, self-respect, real purpose and lasting wisdom. So let's talk about each area and briefly give us an explanation for these. Sure, so one of the things that I realized in this, in this idea that we think something's missing inside of us and that we're shopping to fulfill it. So let's take true connection. Um, I had this woman call me a couple weeks ago to uh, book me to come help declutter them. And she was in her 70s and she, full disclosure, this was her saying it. She's like, I have been shopping like a drunken sailor. I have been buying, 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 buying. And I said, well, tell me what's been going on with you. Like, you know, what, you know, pandemic and how everything. And she said, you know, right before the pandemic, I, uh, I retired from my job of 35 years, which was a very social job. Then the pandemic hit, I couldn't go to church in person and I stopped playing bridge. So all of a sudden, all of the things that she used to connect with people were taken away from her. So she started shopping, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm connecting. I feel like I'm talking to a store online or I'm going into a store. So she's looking for connection through shopping. And guess what? It doesn't work. You don't find that true connection. And the same thing with self-confidence. Look, we all buy too many beauty products and we think that's what's gonna give us self-confidence. But really self-confidence comes from helping other people and being of service and doing, you know, doing good in the world. So that's an amazing one. Big love, that's what I'm looking at all my parents and grandparents out there who overbuy for their kids. You know, they feel guilty that they're working too much and so they, you know, buy all the Legos and buy all the toys. And so what I what I went to with these seven what I call the clutter magnets is what do you think is missing in your life or what's missing in your life and how are you using shopping to fulfill it can you find another way instead of like hopping on amazon can you call a friend and say hey i'm kind of having a hard day today do you want to meet up for a walk like what can you do that's not shopping i like that you're making the correlation between wellness and you know decluttering and being organized because i think it's it's very important to look at it that way because when you really look at it most of the time that we do shop, we feel a need to, you know, as you said, we get that rush of dopamine. We want that rush. So that's why we keep shopping and we get addicted to it. So I, li I like that you're looking at it as, you know, when we declutter our space, we feel more fulfilled and, and we have time to do, as you said, we have time to live our lives and live a more productive life. Absolutely. And you know, the other thing about over shopping and look, I'm guilty of this. It just happened to me the other day. Like you get on that sort of shopping spree and things are on sale and you're buying them and you, and I left, I sat in my car and I was like, dear, I had like a shopping hangover. I was like, oh, why did I buy that stuff? I don't even need it. I didn't want it. And then when I looked back, I was like, oh yeah, I was having, there were some things going on that were really hard to deal with. And I just wanted to ignore them. So I think that when we can understand what we think we're trying to fix with the shopping, then all of a sudden we don't need it as much. And look, 
I'm not telling you not to shop. I love cute clothes. I love a cute pair of shoes. Like I will, but if, if you're looking at it from, I want to get myself whole and healthy and in a great mindset, then the shopping becomes the sprinkles on the ice cream. It's not the whole thing. Yeah, that's the worst, the, the regret, right? You feel bad and you feel yeah. guilty and you're like, yeah. why did I do that? And you have this, you know, this regret. So, I, I Yeah, mean, it's I funny like, and we all have it, yeah. right? You like, you look at those shopping bags and you're like, what did I do? And that day was extra bad for me because everything was final sale. So I couldn't return it. I yeah. got sucked into the like it was on sale. And I'm like, I have this bag of stuff I don't need. So, you know, when when you'll find yourself sort of in a shopping frenzy, I always just say, like, take a breath. Take a moment and figure out what's really going on. Did you just break up with somebody? Are things hard at work? Like almost always when we get in that shopping frenzy, there's something else going on. Absolutely. And, and walk us through a session with Declutterfly. Um, I'm sure you've seen some very crowded spaces. So where do you guys start? Walk us through a session and what people can expect. Absolutely. So, you know, it's... Um, the amazing thing about hiring an organizer, and I will also say this to people who are out there, if you really feel like you need extra help, hiring an organizer is a fantastic thing to do. And, you know, if you, I would say to people, like, if it's not your strong suit, why not get the support you need? You know, if you, if you needed help, if you wanted a trainer or if you wanted a life coach or, you know, it's someone to support you. So I always think of the people who hire organizers as really helping themselves, not as failing, not that you can't do it. It's understanding your limitations. So the nice thing about hiring an organizer and working with Declutterfly especially is that we tackle the whole project. So we'll get a whole garage done. You know, you've got support, you've got people there. We, and we just do what you do. We put it into piles, like with like, keep, donate, trash, recycle, but we're there encouraging you and really helping you make the decision. Like, do you need this? Do yeah. you need this? I had a client, you'll crack up at this. It was a young couple and they were about to have their first baby and they had a very tiny little cute house and they needed to make room for the baby. And the husband had a ton of clothes. Like he had so many clothes. And most of it he couldn't fit into anymore and he wasn't gonna wear it. And he had these little <laughs> tiny like running shorts and he had like 30 pairs of them. Oh. And I'm like, do you wear those? Do you still wear those? And he's like, I wear them all the time. And I was like, okay. You need to put those on and you need to go to Starbucks and you need to get us coffees, decaf for your pregnant wife and come back. And if you can do that, I will let you keep them. <laughs> he couldn't even get out the front door. He was oh like, I'm embarrassed. And I'm like, out they go. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, working with the Clutterfly and a professional organizer, it gives you that, um, you know, that support and also the permission to let go. Mm. We're like, you can let it go. It's okay. And sometimes that's all people need. I think that's so true. Sometimes we're so attached to the our clothes that we don't want to get rid of them. But really, you know what, what I like to do is I put all the things that I don't wear or even things that I don't really like in a box and I just give it away. And I feel so much better because I know that someone's going to appreciate it. I'm doing a good gesture and I'm decluttering my space by giving it away. So I think that... And you know, Daryl, that's a great point. If letting go is hard for you, if you know that you're giving it to someone who could actually need it, like my company works a lot with organizations that help kids uh, that are in the foster care system. That really speaks to us. We, it's something we care deeply about. And so, you know, for my clients, when I can say, oh, all this furniture you're getting rid of, we're setting up an apartment for a kid who's basically been homeless most of their life. So if letting go is hard for you, find an organization to donate to that speaks to you. Animal Rescue, you know, Habitat for Humanity. There's so many great organizations out there or even a neighbor or a young friend or your gardener or, you know, somebody that could use this stuff. It will be so much easier to let go than if you're putting it in the landfill. Absolutely. And it gives you peace. You're doing a good gesture and you're giving it away to someone that actually will use it and have a new item, right? <laughs> Who's not happy to get new clothes? <laughs> exactly, exactly. I used to, in the old days, uh, when we were young with a group of girlfriends, we used to do this amazing thing called a clothes swap. 
and we'd bring all our clothes that we didn't want and we'd like do it at somebody's house on a Saturday and we'd swap our used clothes and we'd laugh and just catch up and it was so great. And then at the end, whatever nobody wanted, we took to the women's shelter and you know, it's so funny, my friends, we're now all working professionals, but they're all like, can we do a clothes swap again? It was so fun. <laughs> That's funny that you said the women's shelter because I do the same thing. I also give my clothes to the women's shelter. I get a big box of clothes and I give it away. And I know it gives me peace because I know that it's going, you know, to people that need it. I'm doing a good gesture and it's it's like an all around win for everybody, right? <laughs> so it's funny that you Absolutely. Said that. Yeah. Absolutely. And also those clothes were just sitting in your closet. You weren't exactly. wearing them. You know, exactly. that's the thing that I tell people when they're hanging on. I'm like, but you're not using it. Exactly. Like, what are you holding on to it for? So that's a great point. If, if letting go is difficult for you, find an organization that speaks to you. And Tracy, you know, I want to talk about, you know, I created my platform to inspire. So I really want to talk about as a woman in the wellness space, what are some obstacles that you face in this industry and how did you get through them? Oh, that's interesting. You know, that's, that's such a, that's such a, uh, yeah. You know, I think for me, it was really, I didn't start my business till I was in my 40s. Mm -hmm. So I really went up against, and honestly, Darielle, it was a lot in my own head. Like, I'm too old to be doing this. I'm too old to be starting a business. You know, who am I? It's sort of the imposter syndrome. And what I had to realize is that I had a life experience and, you know, I've so I worked with and as my business has grown and worked with so many clients that like age is wisdom and age is. And even though they'll tell us, you know, them out there on social media and everything that anti aging and you're too old and, you know, and it's just it's a mindset like mm -hmm. I have so much to offer and when I realized that it wasn't about the age and that the age gave me experience I was really able to step into being an expert and helping people yeah absolutely there is no limits I feel that you know age and all of these things we put these limits on ourselves but really you know you can do things at any age I mean I think it was um, Colonel Sanders from KFC. He started his business in his 60s after failing over a thousand times. <laughs> so it's like... I know, isn't that amazing? Uh, Dario, by the way, I'm getting married this weekend for oh, the first wow. time at 58. Oh my gosh. I've never been married. Tracy, congratulations. That's amazing <laughs> and inspirational. And I love it. I love it. <laughs> congratulations. Yeah. And you know, I had this feeling when I, and it's the same with sort of starting my company and being in this wellness space is understanding like I lived it. I'm living a great life. And it, this is when I met the perfect partner. I hadn't met them before and it doesn't matter yeah. the age. Like we're so happy to be celebrating and we're so, it's so great. So I, I think you're exactly like, you, you know, people need to remember you are where you are right mm -hmm. now and you have the ability to go in a different direction if you want. Every day you have the choice about what you want to do with your life. And that is so freeing, right? Mm -hmm. Like I may have been this way in the past, like I may have been really cluttered in the past, but it's not working for me anymore. So yeah. I want to change my behavior. Mm -hmm. It's so empowering. Absolutely. Every day is a new opportunity to make new decisions and create a better life. And I love that. I love that you're doing that. You seem happier than ever. You know, I, I can just sense the happiness um, from you. So congratulations again. I think that's really exciting. Thank you. I am happy. I yeah. have to say, I love the work that I do. Mm. I love making a difference. You know, I got I just get the like the greatest emails and the greatest DMs. And I got a lovely DM from just this woman in Ireland the other day that was like, I finally let go of, I mean, it sounds so silly, but I know how for her, she was like, I had these eight chairs that were my parents that were ugly and big and I never used them. And I was forever moving them around my house. And she was like, I finally let them go. Yeah. I find I took a picture and I let them go and she's like and now I had friends over because there weren't chairs all over yeah. my living room and I'm so lucky to share this journey with people I, I just it fills me up it lights me up that's so true it, it's something small but when your home is clean and organized you want to entertain you want people to be in that space right when it's not you don't want to invite people over and you might not even be socializing as much in your place because you're embarrassed that it's disorganized. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. I always say your home should be restful, 
rejuvenating and shareable. You should be, and look, if you don't want to have people over, you don't have to do it, yeah. but you should, you know, you, you want to have people come over. You want to fill your house with connection and joy. And if you have a really cluttered house, I'm promising you, you're not inviting people over because you're embarrassed. Yeah. And what I want is people to have a home that they can share with their friends and family. Absolutely. I learned that from my mom. My parents have a beautiful house. My mom is very into feng shui and having things very organized and decluttering. So she's someone who's always on me to declutter and get rid of things. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, that's definitely something I practice in my own life. And you know, for anyone that's going through a hard time that's watching this, that is maybe unmotivated or not even motivated to clean up their space and get organized, what would you say to encourage and uplift them? I would say to go back to looking at the positive of what would you gain by decluttering and getting organized, not beat yourself up for how you've been living up until now. That's the mistake that people make. I'm lazy. I'm a bad housekeeper. I don't want that. I want you to say like, oh, if I decluttered and got my house organized, I could throw my best friend's birthday party or I could you know, sleep better at night or be in a good mood when I get dressed in the morning. Focus on what the positive you'll gain and that's gonna inspire you to get it done. Because when we come at it from beating ourselves up, oh, I'm lazy, you know, all that stuff, that's not a motivator. So think about what you're gonna gain by doing this. I think that's great advice. And for Tracy, uh, for our viewers that wanna learn more about your work um, and get some tips and tricks on how to declutter their homes, um, where can they do so? Absolutely. So Instagram is, is a great, it's at Tracy underscore McCubbin. I do three to four, five minute challenges a week. Nice. So you are always, it's always happening. That's a great place. And if you want to do a little deeper dive, my website, tracymccubbin.com. I have a quiz on there to find out where your clutter is holding you back. Um, if you sign up for my email, you get a list of 25 things you can declutter under five minutes. So, you know, there's lots going on. We will link all that information for our viewers uh, to take a look at your work. I think you're doing amazing work. Congratulations, Tracy, on all your success. I love that you're, you found your purpose. You can feel your happiness. And congratulations again on your wedding. I'm excited for you. <laughs> Thank you. We're so excited. And just so everybody knows, which is so cute, my fiance is wearing a decluttered tuxedo oh, wow. to the wedding. Somebody, <laughs> a client got rid of a tux and it fit him perfectly. So he's wearing oh, a decluttered wow. tux, which we just love. I love it. Tracy, thank you so much for being on the show. <laughs> thank you. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook. Oh, 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 oh,